Welcome to Opening Michigan's Doors to Immigrants. Uh, this forum is sponsored by Michigan State University's Institute for Public Policy and Social Research. I'm Anne Marie Schneider and I work for the Institute. It's my pleasure to host this topic today. Uh, and this very well-informed panel of expertise. Immigration to Michigan is currently, I think, an exciting topic. It's seen a terrific movement in our state and it is critically important to everyone in this room as well as everyone across the state. So this morning's discussion is focused on immigration in Michigan, why we are reading more about it in our media headlines, why is our governor as well as other states looking to attract an immigrant population, and what is this mutual attraction between our state and immigrants? As has all of our forums this season, this forum is about, really, about building a sustainable economy. We began our season with a presentation of Michigan's demographics and how those numbers reflect on our economy. Many of you were here for that. Thank you for, for showing up. In March, we talked about building a culture of innovation in our state that would be both attractive to outsiders and invigorating to Michiganians who had a few good ideas to hatch. So today, we want to present a factual picture of immigration and what that means to our state, particularly in, a, in an economic sense. Uh, we have a video introduction to show you, and after that video, I'm going to ask Peter Briggs to follow up at the podium. Peter is the director of MSU's Office for International Students and Scholars. He has more than 30 years experience in services to international students and scholars. And it doesn't take long to figure out that he has years of experience when you speak with him. I'm very fortunate to work with Peter on campus and host him here today. Um, he understands the international student community and their challenges better than anyone, period. As we speak, MSU has more than 7,100 international students on campus, and I believe every one of those students have connected with Peter's office. <coughs> yes, they would. Sure. Correct. <laughs> Actually, I believe it's 7,146. Ranked by 15? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I was close. Yeah. <laughs> uh, following Peter will be Steve Tabachman, and Steve is the director of Global Detroit and has spent the past three years spearheading a regional economic revitalization strategy focused on immigration and global connections. He has his finger on the pulse of just about any activity that, that addresses immigration to Michigan and is a leader among a, va a vast network of people who are working in, in regard to uh, immigration. Karen Filippi, am I saying that correctly? Filippi. Filippi. The accent is like Filippi. Karen Filippi will tie up the presentation segment of our program today. And it's, it's again, exciting to have Karen on board. She's, she's a familiar colleague to both Peter and Steve. She was recently appointed by Governor Snyder as Deputy Director of the Michigan Office for New Americans. And she brings more than 20 years experience in immigration law to that position as playing a lead role in, in building this new office. Following our presentations, we'll turn to you for discussion. So now for the video introduction of our topic, Jess. Today's economy, high growth, high prosperity, knowledge-based, and driven by a fierce competition for college graduates and advanced degree holders. To succeed, Michigan must attract and retain a strong crop of young, educated people. In the 2000s, Michigan ranked last in the nation for the percentage of its young people aged 25 to 34 who were born out of state and near last in its total population for that age group. Where will the future leaders of Michigan's economy come from? Last year we had over 23,000 international students. In the late 70s there were a lot of students from Iran. And then the numbers of Indians and Koreans and one of the historical sweeps we've seen is the number of Chinese undergraduates. Stemming from a Global Detroit study on the impact of immigrant talent to the region, 
Funded by the New Economy Initiative and the MEDC and housed at the University Research Corridor, GTRI is the nation's first international student talent retention program to help Michigan companies fill much-needed talent gaps. Right now, we do not have the educated population to fill all of the jobs. What we're trying to do is fill that talent gap with international students. Companies will grow if they're able to fill these jobs. If they're unable to fill these jobs, we don't grow. The Global Talent Retention Initiative collaborates with over 20 Michigan colleges and universities to keep talented international students in Michigan. GTRI helps connect employers with unmet workforce and talent needs with these pivotal international students. The New Economy Initiative came to us at the URC to ask if we would host the organization, growing the talent pool here in the state, not exporting that talent. Generally, the student affairs programs are underfunded and understaffed. We can help them develop specialized programs and offer career development resources specifically for international students. GTRI understands what these international students are faced with. GTRI encourages international students to take advantage of practical training eligibility to work in the USA during their degree programs and after graduation. It educates employers on how to use international students and graduates to fill unmet talent needs. The resources they provided are really time-saving and is specifically targeted at international students and also the companies who hire international students. Research has shown that for every 100 H-1Bs, it creates 183 jobs. And the reasoning for this is you're hiring the innovators that will put the rest of the state back to work. Immigrants are helping to advance Michigan into the new economy by launching high-tech firms at incredible rates. We found that immigrants were behind a third of all the high-tech firms created in Michigan from 1995 through 2005. They're job generators. It's a misunderstanding to think they take jobs, they add jobs. Right now we have three full-time staff members and we have a lot of interns, contractors that we pay by the hour and the fact that MSU is right there has uh, tremendous opportunities. You feel like you're in good hands here. When given the opportunity, the international students not only create jobs, but become integrated into the communities and contribute to the local economy in meaningful ways. I started an initiative called a Pure Spartan Initiative. I worked with the Michigan State University to help three Spartans to create three companies within three years. Entrepreneurship is in the blood of the Americans. GTRI now offers a way for employers to signal their willingness to hire international talent. The Global Opportunity Employer Program, or Go Employer. Go employers are willing to hire international students who do not require sponsorship for internships and full-time employment. They are also willing to consider sponsoring foreign nationals for employer-sponsored work visas such as H-1B. Menlo Innovations is a software design and development firm. We bring four to six international interns every year. Bringing in these international components into our space gives us a worldwide perspective on what we're trying to accomplish. All businesses are global now. It doesn't matter how small or how large the business is. You really need to be globally competent right now to really succeed. International students and immigrants can create significant and sustained economic growth and job creation for Michigan's residents. Hiring an international student fills an immediate talent need and also invests in Michigan's economic future.